This is part three of a series on weights initialization. In this video, we will look at the weights initialization proposed by Kaiming He et al. This video was produced in Korean and translated into English. My voice is AI generated text to speech. In the last video, we looked at the weight initialization proposed by Xavier Gloro and Yoshua Bengio. Xavier Gloro assumes that the sigmoid or hyperbolic tangent activation function is linear near the origin. However, this assumption is not valid for real U. This is because rel U is definitely a nonlinear function near the origin. In this video, we will see how Kaiming He initializes the weights for the ReLU activation function. In a neural network using ReU, we will look at how to initialize the weights so that the input signal and gradients can flow smoothly through each layer during the forward and backward propagation. This allows us to obtain the optimal variance of the normal distribution for weights initialization. And in the same way as above, we find the optimal range of uniform distribution for the initial weights. Finally, we will apply Keras Kaiming He Initializer to a network. In 2015, Kaiming He et al. proposed an efficient way to initialize the weights of a neural network in this paper. First, they proposed a parametric rectified linear unit, PLU activation function. PRELU is an activation function with a slope for negative values and is a generalization of the traditional ReU. This slope is not a hyperparameter, but is learned during training. Second, they derived a robust initialization method that particularly considers the nonlinearity of ReU. In this video, we will only look at the second part. Now let's go through the method proposed by Kaiming He step by step. First, let's consider forward propagation in a neural network. During forward propagation, we would like the variance of the activations to remain constant across layers. Let's find the optimal variance of the initial weight distribution in the forward direction. Let's consider a subnetwork consisting of a lower layer and an upper layer as shown below. There are ni neurons in the lower layer and ni plus 1 neurons in the upper layer. i is the layer number. The output of the lower layer is z i, and the output of the upper layer is z i plus 1. z i plus 1 can be written like this. Both activation functions f1 and f2 are ReLU. The weight matrix between the lower and the upper layer is w i. We would like to set the initial values of wi efficiently. When we try to initialize wi using a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma squared, we will try to find the optimal sigma squared. Assume that the mean of w is 0, but the mean of z is not 0. This is because the distribution of z is like this since the activation function is ReLU. Our goal is to make the variance of the lower layer output equal to the variance of the upper layer output. This allows input signals with similar distributions to flow from lower layers to upper layers. Let's find the variance of W that achieves this goal. As we saw in the previous videos, the variance of SI plus 1 can be written as follows. 
Using the formula for the variance of the product of two independent variables, this can be written as follows. By the assumption, the mean of W is zero. Therefore, var of SI plus one can be written like this. The square of E of ZI can be written like this by the formula of variance. Then, since this term and this term cancel each other out, VR of SI plus one can be written as follows. Now let's compute the mean of ZI squares. Since ZI is real of SI, the mean of the squares of ZI can be written as follows. Here, P of S is the probability density function of S. This is equivalent to integrating it from zero to infinity. And since the function that Z does S is symmetric about the origin, we can rewrite it like this. This means the average of SI squares. Since the mean of SI is zero, we can write it like this. Therefore, VR of SI plus one can be written as follows. Here, since the objective is to make this term and this term equal, we can cancel the two terms in this equation. Then the variance of WI becomes two over NI. This is the optimal variance of weights obtained from forward propagation, satisfying the objective. Let me give you an example. If the number of neurons in the lower layer is 100, the initial weights of the upper layer are set by drawing them from a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a variance of 0.02. Next, let's consider backward propagation in a neural network. During backpropagation, we would like the variance of the gradients of loss with respect to the output Z to remain constant across layers. Let's find the optimal variance of the initial weight distribution in the backward direction. Let's consider a subnetwork consisting of a lower layer and an upper layer, just like the previous page. There are n neurons in the lower layer and k neurons in the upper layer. In the lower layer, this output is SI, and in the upper layer, this output is SI plus 1. The activation functions F1 and F2 are both ReLU. The weight matrix between the lower and the upper layer is WI. We would like to set the initial values of WI efficiently. When we try to initialize WI using a normal distribution with mean zero and variance sigma squared, we will try to find the optimal sigma squared. We assume that the mean of W is zero. We define the gradients of the loss L with respect to Z as delta Z. And we define the gradients of the loss L with respect to S as delta S. Our goal is to make the variance of the gradients of the loss L with respect to Z I plus one propagating from the upper layer equal to the variance of the gradients of the loss L with respect to ZI propagated to the lower layer. This allows backward signals with similar distributions to flow from upper layers to lower layers. Let's find the variance of W that achieves this objective. Delta ZI can be written as follows by the chain rule. By definition, the partial derivative of L with respect to SI plus 1 is delta SI plus 1. Since SI plus 1 is ZI WI plus BI, the partial derivative of SI plus 1 with respect to ZI is WI. 
the mean of delta zi can be written like this. Since delta s and w are independent, we can rewrite it as follows. And since the mean of w is zero, the mean of delta zi is zero. Next, let's find delta si plus one. By the definition, delta si plus one is the partial derivative of L with respect to si plus one. If we apply the chain rule here, we get this. The first factor is delta zi plus one. Since zi plus one is f2 of si plus one, the next factor is f2 prime of si plus one. We take the expectation on both sides of the above equation. If s is positive, f prime of s is one. And if s is negative, f prime of s is zero. And the probability that s is positive or negative is one half each. Therefore, the expected value of delta si plus one can be written as follows. Since the expected value of delta zi is zero, the expected value of delta zi plus one can also be zero. So the expected value of delta si plus one is zero. Next, let's find the variance of delta si plus one. We take the variance on both sides of the above equation. Since these factors are independent, we can write this using the variance formula as follows. Again, since the expected value of delta zi is zero, the expected value of delta zi plus one can also be zero. And since the probability of f prime of s being zero or one is one half each, the mean of these is one half. So this can be written as follows. Next, let's find the variance of the delta zi. This equation is for a single path. Delta zi should be the sum of all gradients backpropagated along multiple paths. So the actual delta zi can be expressed as follows. As we saw in the last video, when we take the variance on both sides of this equation, we multiply it by ni plus one because of the sigma symbol. Then, as we saw in the previous video, this equation can be expressed as follows. The first factor of this equation is the number of neurons in the upper layer. And the second factor is this expression we got above. Our goal is to make this equal to this. So we can cancel these two out in this equation then the variance of wi becomes 2 over ni plus 1. This is the variance of w that can achieve the objective during backward propagation. We found two optimal variances for w. One is for forward propagation, and the other is for backward propagation. If the number of neurons in the lower and upper layers are equal, the two variances are equal, Otherwise, the two variances are different. Xavier Gloro used an average of the two, but Kaiming, he said that using either one would suffice. Let me give you an example. If the number of neurons in the lower layer is 80, and the number of neurons in the upper layer is 100, the initial weights between the lower and upper layer are set by drawing them from a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a variance of either their 0 0.02 or 0 0.025. Next, let's look at how to initialize the weights using a uniform distribution. 
Now that we know the optimal variance for a normal distribution, we can also find the range for a uniform distribution. There is a uniform distribution with a range from negative A to positive A. The average of this is zero. For this to be a probability distribution, this area must be one. Then the height will be one over two A. The probability density function of this distribution can be written as follows. The variance of this distribution will be one third A squared. And as we saw earlier, the following two conditions must be met. We already know the variance that satisfies the above conditions. And the variance of a uniform distribution must also be equal to that variance. Therefore, the A satisfying the above conditions is as follows. That is, the weights are initialized using this distribution. Let's see how to use Xavier Glorot's weights initialization formula with a simple example. Given a neural network model like the one below, set appropriate initial distributions of W1 and W2. There are 50 neurons in the input layer. There are 80 neurons in the first hidden layer and 100 neurons in the second hidden layer. If we use a normal distribution, the initial distribution of W2 is as follows. 80 is the number of neurons in the lower layer. The initial distribution of W1 will be like this. The variance of the initial distribution of W1 is slightly larger. This is because the number of neurons in the lower layer is smaller. If we use a uniform distribution, the initial distribution of W2 will be like this. The initial distribution of W1 is as follows. In this case, the initial distribution of W1 is slightly wider. Finally, let's apply Kaiming-He's method to a neural network using Keras. Import Keras initializers. Let's create a neural network model like this and apply Kaiming-He initializer to both hidden layers. Create Kaiming-He initializers for normal and uniform distributions. The number of neurons in the input layer and the two hidden layers are 50, 80, and 100 respectively. Generate input data X using a standard normal distribution with mean zero and variance one. Build a neural network model. Create an input layer and add two hidden layers. The weights of each hidden layer are initialized to he normal. And the activation functions are set to real u. Create an output layer. Create a model that checks the outputs of the first hidden layer, S1. And create another model that checks the outputs of the second hidden layer, S2. Create a model for training. We will only check the initial weights and the outputs of the hidden layers, so no training is performed. Check the initial weights of the hidden layers, W1 and W2 and check the outputs S1 and S2 of each hidden layer when input data X is fed into these models. Let's check the standard deviation of W1 calculated by Keras when using a normal distribution. Then, use this formula to manually calculate and compare the results. Let's check the range of W1 calculated by Keras when using a uniform distribution. We check the range with the minimum and maximum values of W1. Then we will use this formula to manually calculate and compare the results. And we will also check the standard deviation of the normal distribution and the range of the uniform distribution for W2.
Let's check the results. When using a normal distribution, the standard deviation of W1 calculated by Keras is 0 0.198, and the standard deviation calculated by the formula is 0 0.2. The two results are similar. The two results are the same for W2. When using the uniform distribution, the W1 initialized by Keras are in this range. The results calculated by the formula are as follows. The two results are the same. For W2, the two results are also the same. Let's run this code. The results are as follows. So far, we have looked at weight initialization methods through three videos.